Oh, when did you arrive? In the afternoon. Here. You mean here or there? I left Hong Kong at six in the morning. Wow. I to Hong Kong. Yes, yes, I, I heard that's crazy. Now we did the definition last time. I think the uh, the full ribbon we defined it as Cartesian product. Yes, and no. Last time. Uh, okay, then we'll do it now. Very good. So this is an. Uh, outline of the of half of what we'll do so after this what follows are the representations uh, the higher gilfand settling version of the of the representations with a lot of uh, simplicial things related to permitohida so let's uh, Let's give a definition and uh, a theorem and some uh, series. So here, um, hmm? no goblets. Oh, goblins! Yes, yes, yes. We should. Uh, oh, there are goblins. Look, there's one up there. Do you see? Yes. I think uh, some good climber got a shot at it. Very good. So there we are. And uh, now on Halloween day, let's see the higher routes. We'll take... Uh, um, so now we'll have G... N is a simple Lie group at the root of one at the nth root of one. This is also known as a quantum group. And uh, we have G uh, module of GN. We have the vertices of G, the irreducibles uh, for lack of time. We haven't uh, studied this in general, but we'll take, uh, we'll work mostly with the uh, case AN here, although quite a lot, including these higher roots, work in general. So these are the irreducibles, the vertices of G, and then we have a graph G alpha 
for every generator generating EREP of uh, G. So which lives, by the way, it lives on the, so this is, uh, this is called the subjacent which means underlying group. This is SL2 for usual math. We'll also use the expression that we do uh, uh, mathematics, we do representation theory, or mathematics in general, over G. So that's the, uh, the idea is that the usual mathematics has as underlying group uh, SL2, in uh, uh, things like uh, matrices, representation theory, uh, manifolds which are built out of matrices for gluing and so forth. So what we are, try, what we are doing now is replace that, uh, not just with a higher math as the title of the, of the course says, which would be SL3, SL4, but in general with a semi-simple E group, yes? Uh, so G alpha for every generating uh, E rep of G. And uh, so thus for any alpha in, uh, in the representations of G. And uh, now we'll define the, uh, the ribbon so as I was mentioning before, the uh, attempt to use uh, this, uh, this uh, higher graph uh, G, Roman G. Which one? This G. Uh, oh, here. Uh, no, no, this works for any uh, representation, yes, of G. So the, the uh, representation ring, so the representation, uh, thank you for the question, the representation ring of uh, G at uh, the nth root of one, is a quotient and it's uh, well, uh, uh, I mean there, there's a lot of literature on that so we're going to use that as a starting point. Uh, basically our approach is uh, uh, for using, for instance, mirrors, this is a case of SL3, which we looked at last time. Uh, if we use these, uh, these mirrors, 
we'll have here the irreducible representations, the empty single dot, double dot vertically. These are the generators. And uh, after that, we have an affine mirror. So this is the affine cutoff. It's, uh, it's perpendicular to the affine root, which we find with the Dunkin diagram as described uh, earlier on. Or this is, uh, or it's negative, which is the biggest root, the one with the coefficients of the affine root. And uh, in, the, uh, in the case of uh, uh, the graph, this is a graph for SL3. And uh, this is at the, uh, just to establish notation, this is at the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 root of unity, and the graph here is called, uh, the graph is called A3, this is a level, and in physics that means the highest degree not uh, killed by cutoff. So the attempt to use uh, this graph, so on this graph, the, if we put now arrows as we did, we can put arrows as we did last time, showing the tensoring with with the generators. Uh, by the way, the cutoff here is, uh, is uh, as you can see for the uh, SLN, yes, it's a number of copies of the generators. Yes, so here everything which has four copies of the generators is cut. That's on the mirror, yes? And uh, so the uh, young diagrams will be in a, in a box here. Mm. And uh, uh, we have a definition, the full ribbon is uh, the Cartesian product weights of G. This means uh, here, this is a weight lattice. Weights of G, Cartesian product with uh, vertices of uh, the graph uh, G, which is a module. Now, on this graph, we have, as shown last time, we have uh, fusion graphs. So we have fusion. Uh, fusion with I alpha of uh, J beta. This is the dimension of home 
from uh, uh, alpha from sigma j minus i tends alpha to beta. So this is on the graph G. J minus I is a weight. And alpha, beta are in the vertices of G. So on the graph G, we know how to tensor that part of the data. We know how to tensor with the generators. And it's supposed to be a module, so the, uh, that extends in with, to uh, tensoring with any uh, representation of uh, G. And uh, Moreover, tensoring with these representations on the cutoff mirrors will give zero. Uh, we assume not just that we know how to tensor things, uh, which would be just a fusion graph, but we assume that we have all the data for the action, which, uh, which means in this case, um, uh, let me show it in the case. Uh, uh, well, I'll show it a bit later in the case of uh, SL3, what the data consists of. But uh, let's, uh, let's continue here. So this is a fusion. Now, the fusion is... Uh, the fusion is biharmonic. So this fusion, I, this is, a, this is an uh, integer, yes? And uh, so fusion of uh, I alpha, this goes from the uh, vertices, from the vertices of the ribbon. to uh, Z. And uh, uh, let's observe that this is biharmonic. Function, which means that uh, that the following. I mean, suppose that we have uh, uh, K in the, uh, uh, let's take first in the generators, generating, so fundamental representation of generating representation of uh, G. Now, <coughs> in that case, if we look at home from uh, sigma J minus I, tens uh, uh, let's put it, uh, this is tensor alpha to sigma k tensor beta. As we are showing this sigma k tensor beta, so this is a tensor product, it decomposes into irreducibles. And uh, uh, this decomposes as a sum of uh, 
sigma L over L in the weight of uh, K, of sigma K, sigma L tends to beta. And the sum is here with multiplicity. So when you tensor with a representation, you take the sum of the neighbors of uh, the beta with uh, each of them taken with, uh, with uh, uh, multiplicity, the multiplicity in the representation of K. So uh, the same, of course, applies to the module. And now this is the... Uh, uh, this is isomorphic canonically by the Frobenius reciprocity theorem, which is really uh, very close to the theorem uh, which you did in uh, linear algebra. You can move in a tensor product uh, something from the left-hand side to the right-hand side to sigma uh, j sigma k bar tends uh, uh, sigma j minus i tends uh, alpha to beta, which is isomorphic to sigma to home from uh, sigma j minus uh, minus k bar plus i tens uh, alpha to beta and uh, 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 now we need here, excuse me, we need the k bar on the j side. So k bar uh, plus j minus i tensor alpha. And here, uh, this, as you can see, this is a neighbors of uh, j. So this is the Laplacian of, uh, of uh, K bar on the graph G. And here we have the Laplacian with K on G. So these are the neighbors of beta on the graph G. This is the neighbors of G on the graph, uh, on the weights. Of G. So you can see that associativity, uh, simply the associativity here, gives this, uh, this uh, biharmonicity property. Yes, and you can also see that you need to uh, tensor with, you, you need to take the neighbors with k bar on one graph and with k on the other graph for biharmonicity. So, uh, mm, now we should uh, state the theorem So once again, uh, trying to use this time the graph G with the generators, trying to use that as uh, uh, just like for simple roots, yes, to get angles, uh, does not work. So this is the approach that worked. Uh, uh, this was where the original uh, and remember, I was uh, telling you the history of this, that the, uh, 
uh, the uh, uh, Dunkin diagrams, the candidates for Dunkin diagrams were found uh, initially by uh, Di Francesco and Zubert around 1995. And uh, um, they had also, they, they had some criteria by analogy to the, uh, to the usual Dunkin diagrams, namely the spectrum should be among the spectrum of the graph A. Uh, uh, it should, uh, since sigma and sigma bar, the generating representations, all the representations uh, of uh, quantum group commute uh, in fusion, since uh, there's a braiding. Um, so they always give the same uh, fusion products. The tensoring, the graph of tensoring with sigma and with sigma bar, three and three bar in the case of uh, SL3, in, in the uh, names given by physicists, so those should commute. So, so the matrix uh, of tensoring should be normal. It should have this way. It should be diagonalizable, the spectrum they had. Uh, this uh, did not work, actually. Uh, the, even the definition did not work because they found uh, uh, matrix which was uh, bad, and uh, so they accepted uh, the definition which I had. I was working on uh, uh, what would be uh, uh, in the names used here, modules and subgroups of quantum SU3, and I was alerted by uh, Robert Cocoro, whom I was visiting in southern France, that uh, the physicist from uh, Paris, from Saclay, had a bounty on uh, the classification of these, uh, of these uh, higher Dunkin diagrams. So uh, they were missing at the time a series, but by the time I brought that uh, series, they had it as well. However, the, the bad one uh, turned out to be worse and worse when they tried to use it. So. One has to use, uh, one has to, to use uh, when one goes to the higher, uh, to the deeper things, one has to use a full structure, which I will mention. Now, uh, theorem, let's uh, write the theorem here that the, uh, um, okay, so, uh, one more, let me see if I need to make one more uh, observation here. So in general, we take a period period of uh, weights of G. Uh, multiple of the torus of the n by n torus. So that each higher root Uh, to be defined here appears only once. In the case of SL2, this period was 2n. For SL3, it's n square. So theorem, uh, the orthogonal projection of uh, the function one in uh, one on I alpha
let's put here of the unit vector onto fusion onto the span of uh, fusion of J beta multiplied by the size of the period has entries the inner product of uh, as entry entry as entry on J beta, the inner product of uh, the projections of I alpha and J beta. And equals the sum sum over the vial group of G of epsilon of W the sine times uh, fusion from I alpha minus uh, from I, let's put it here, I minus rho plus W rho alpha to J beta. Rho is the vial vector of G. We shall also give uh, some uh, power series for, uh, for both fusion and for, uh, uh, and for uh, uh, the root inner product. So in particular, this, uh, so uh, we'll call now 
by the way, we should call a root of I alpha the normalized projection. We have the the module square is the order of the subjacent vial group. So, <coughs> so it means that the higher roots built on SL3, for instance, have uh, norm uh, uh, square norm six. And uh, according to that formula, the inner product uh, is an integer. Now, uh, power series will prove these in turn. So, um, these power series will generalize uh, the uh, polynomials of uh, the famous polynomials of Chebyshev. Which uh, to which they reduce in the case of uh, of uh, SL two. We have. So there are unitaries, uh, let me write here theorem. There are unitaries. U alpha for alpha highest weights of uh, the fundamental Reps of uh, a G. And these unitaries, U alpha, let me write them here U alpha, which go from ver the vertices of the module group G to uh, itself. So let's write here the endomorphisms of uh, C to the vertices of G. So that extending The map U from uh, from the uh, weights of uh, G to uh, the above space 
C the vertices of G. Multiplicatively, so extending this multiplicatively, we have that the graph G, G alpha. is the sum of uh, uh, A in the weights of sigma alpha of UA That should remind you of the following thing from uh, what we did before. Uh, recall that, for instance, the graph E8, if you took the graph E8 for the usual graph E8, it had eigenvalues which were sum of, which were two cosine, the, the, the quantum number two, yes, which is uh, two cosine of something, which is a sum of two exponentials. Yes, so this means that the graph decomposes, or no, not uniquely, the graph decomposes uh, into a sum of two, of a unitary and its inverse. Yes? With the respective eigenvalues. Now what uh, this tells you is that uh, the, the unitary and its inverse correspond exactly to the two weights of the standard representation of SL2, which are spin one half and spin negative one half. Yes? So, and now uh, let's state the series result. In the, so this is a continuation of the theorem, so in the, uh, um, in the vial chamber, recall that this is a cone. we have <coughs> fusion viewed as a matrix. I'm going to mention what that, uh, the way that well, the fusion is equal to uh, the fusion from I uh, from zero up to RJ. Let's put it like this. So this is viewed as a matrix fusion zero alpha to j beta indexed with the pair alpha beta. So the sum of fusion of zero j times t to the power j is equal to the 
the sum of uh, uh, all the uh, over the vial group, the subjacent vial group. of the following uh, here the product well first for this we have a sign epsilon of w then we have a product of uh, of uh, all uh, um, alpha in the fundamental representations of G of, uh, let's put it like this, G uh, of delta alpha g times uh, t to the power times uh, okay so just a bit so uh, the product of all alphas uh, we have a, a numerator here which we should put first uh, the numerator is the following it's uh, product of all alphas of uh, uh, u w of alpha those are those unitaries times uh, divided by one minus T alpha times U W alpha, and this is uh, one minus, okay, and this is in inside the product. Very good. And this whole sum rather the sum itself should be divided by the sum over W, the same of uh, epsilon of W times the product of alpha in the fundamentals of G of uh, UW alpha and uh, the sum of the inner product with roots is the same sum, but simpler, which shows that the roots are a very natural construction, times the sum of the product of uh, one over one minus T alpha U W alpha uh, let me explain a little bit what's uh, happening
So, um, oh, first, what, are the, what do these uh, formulae give us? Uh, the, the functions are, by the way, they're, they're invariant to the wire groups. So once you know it in, a, in, a, in the main wire chamber, you know them everywhere. So uh, uh, since uh, so let me let me explain a little bit what we have here. Uh, these expressions can be uh, written in terms of the generating uh, of the generators <coughs> and the generators i mean the the <coughs> excuse me the the tensoring with uh, the uh, uh, irreducibles uh, of uh, mean the fundamental representations of G and uh, let me uh, well uh, let me see I might uh, so we'll start uh, proving this theorem uh, uh, later but uh, I mean next time but uh, let me uh, show you an uh, just a bit. Well, uh, let me, I think it's it's better actually if I if I uh, give you a very uh, uh, an example in the case of SL two. So in the case of SL two, you write uh, you write the following. You will write the uh, for instance delta of uh, a graph. Uh, so we'll take uh, G to be SL two we'll have G is E8 and uh, in that case we'll, uh, the statement is the following that the uh, the Laplacian what we call the, the, the multiplication with uh, 1 which is uh, sigma 1 is a spin 1 half uh, degree one the representation of SL2 so delta one which is on the graph E8 is equal to U plus U inverse the sum of a unitary and its inverse and uh, the formula or the fusion is that the what we call the the number of essential paths of fusion from zero to j so which is a matrix fusion from zero alpha to J beta, the alpha beta are in the vertices of E8. This is a matrix indexed with alpha beta. So this, this matrix is equal to U one, so U over one minus T U plus U inverse, or rather minus 
this is a sum with signs, over 1 minus T U inverse divided by U minus U inverse. And uh, the root 0J, which is the inner product with the root, which is a sum, which is a matrix again, root zero alpha in a product with root j beta indexed with a matrix indexed with alpha beta. That this matrix the statement is that this is 1 over 1 minus Tu plus 1 over 1 minus Tu inverse. So these formulae can be used to find uh, uh, very, uh, uh, to find the uh, uh, things out of uh, to find this this uh, this fusion and the roots from the generators, and I suggest to you as an exercise to write these in terms for the next time. Uh, this this would help you a lot if you can write these in terms of uh, delta e eight which is U plus U inverse, yes? So both of them uh, can be written in terms of U plus U inverse. Yes, and do the same for SL3. So write the formula in terms of, uh, of the generators, yes? I have a piece of software which reduces this to generators. The expression in terms of generators, uh, even for something like SL4, is quite uh, monstrous once it's simplified. So these expressions are very simple, but the expression in terms of generators are very complicated. So we'll stop uh, right here. <laughs>